if you had to sum up your teaching in one or two sentences, what would they be? No teaching, no teacher, no student. So then what are we doing here today? To find out who you are. I had entered the ashram and then all was quiet. All was quiet and this man is quiet. Incarnation of silence itself, not speaking to anyone. But then it was tremendous silence. I never saw anybody so silent, you see. So the people who go there, their mind doesn't enter the hall. <laughs> He sits quiet and silence was there. So what he taught was to keep quiet. Yes. On the day you finally got it with Ramana Maharshi, what exactly was happening? I was a devotee of Krishna from childhood. Devotee of Krishna so that Krishna even would manifest in, in physical form. I could see with the senses, I could, as I see other things, so much attached. After spending some four days in Adi Annamlai on the other side of the mountain, Arunachala, then Maharishi asked me, asked me where you had been. I said, down on the other side, staying by myself and playing with Krishna. Oh, see, very good, you have been playing with Krishna. Yes, sir, I was playing with Krishna. He is my friend. <laughs> Do you see him now? No, sir, I don't. So he said, what appears and disappears is not real. Is not real. The seer remained. You saw him, he disappeared. You remain, same seer. Now you are here also. Seer remained. Now find out who the seer is. So it was a word only, no? It was a word. But then it, it struck me. I became the seer, you see. Some seer I saw. And this seer was beyond all, you see. To have any teaching <coughs> is preaching. Teacher has no teaching, no method, no way. To know thy own self, you don't need any teaching. What you really are, always you are that itself. No one is going to teach you. You have to realize who you are, here and now, this moment. Now, the Jew people in the West are being continuously bombarded with spiritual advice. All kinds of gurus and groups are telling Western audiences, join us and you'll be happy. What exactly is different about your message and why should anyone listen to it? They advise you people to destroy them. Mm -hmm. To destroy them and I tell them to reject those teachers and preachers and come to me. I will give you good advice. Don't listen. Don't listen to anybody's advice. Neither to my advice. Keep within you and listen to your own voice. What do you hear? Don't listen to any advice because any advice belongs to the past. So there's no advice to know thyself. So don't listen to anybody's, anybody's advice. You keep quiet. This is the best advice. <laughs> I give advice, keep quiet. Don't think and don't make any effort. This is my advice. And if you follow it, you have done very well for you and for everybody and all the beings of the world. So following any advice, except the advice, be quiet, takes you away from the self and not towards it. Of course, of course it has because it takes you to the past. 
Many people have tried to be quiet, to be still, and they haven't succeeded. What are they doing wrong? To give up the intention to keep quiet. If they are, can't keep quiet, give up the intention to keep quiet, then what will happen? There is no object in the mind, no person, no thing, no concept that can return you happiness and peace of mind. So I just tell them, give them this information, don't look here, there, anywhere. Peace is within you and within the heart of all beings. So you keep quiet, don't look anywhere, don't allow your mind to abide anywhere and you will see that it is peace, happiness itself. That is the fundamental truth and every being in the world is happiness itself. Apaji, I think that most people who come to see you would say that you're giving out something more than information. Almost everyone who comes to you feels that there is some power, some grace in your presence and that this power and this grace enables them to find out who they really are. Do you have any comment on this? Definitely I am, I have, I am pointing out <clears throat> at their own self which is the fountain of the grace, of love, of beauty. Here arises the love and peace also. I just point them out. Look within yourself for one second and you will not search, not find. You will see that you are peace itself. Do we need to believe in anything, Papaji? Do we, for example, have to believe that the Guru's words are correct? Do we have to believe that we can attain freedom? Do we have to believe I am already free? What are the minimum number of things that we have to believe in? Yes, of course, you need faith. Faith in your own self, that I am free. If you at all want to believe in faith, this is the best faith you can have, I am already free. When you can have a faith, I am suffering, I am bound, why not to have the best faith, then I am free? What difference does it make? Papaji, you say that enlightenment is a very easy thing to discover. And yet, I have heard you say many times that the number of people who have fully woken up to their own selves can be counted on one's fingers. If it is so easy, why do so few succeed? It's so easy because you have not to work for it. It's so easy you have not to go anywhere. You have not to go anywhere. You have to stay quiet. Therefore, it is very easy to attain freedom. It's very easy, but it it becomes difficult, the people say difficult, because they are otherwise engaged. So to give up their attachment to other things is difficult. Not the freedom is not difficult. To disengage yourself from other attachments may be difficult. That you have to decide once upon a time, now, or, or next life. Direct the mind to the source. This is the inquiry. And look at, look at the source. Let the mind face the source for the first time. What is the mind? Thought. What is thought? I. Let this I face the source. Now facing the source, is called inquiry. When the eye is facing, there it inquires as mirror in front of the mirror is reflecting. When you see the mirror, see your face, a reflection. When you keep aside the mirror, where does the reflection go? Back to the face. So this eye is inquiring 
from its own source, which was reflected in the mind, mind to the senses, senses to the body, and body to the senses, and senses to the objects. This universe is this thing. So let us hold. This is the method of Maharishi, striking at the root of the mind, everything else, all other methods, ways described by other people who teach any kind of sadhana, any kind of practice, are with the mind. Result will be mental, or like yoga, physical, result will be physical. And this is striking at the root of mind, instantly. So mind is no more. So facing the eye now, straight away, to the source, this reflection of the eye merge back and become that. And here ends the inquiry. Then the man will feel it was, it was me all along. I had been free all along. In order to succeed, Papaji, is it necessary to have a master who is himself spiritually realized? Absolutely. Absolutely. Otherwise, how to know that you are on the, on the right track? Many people in the West, Papaji, have spent a long, long time looking for a realized master. What advice can you give them? How would you advise them to conduct a search for a fully enlightened being? They cannot find, they cannot find, they cannot find a true master, it cannot be seen by the eyes, it cannot be seen by the eyes. Therefore, if they try to see by their, by their senses, they can't make a good uh, judgment because master is beyond the senses and beyond any judgment you can't see. If you feel your mind is quiet and you feel some kind of happiness and peace and that can be the outer symptoms of a teacher and only those people who are, who are intensely devoted to freedom, they can only sense it, not others. So when you go to a teacher, you keep quiet, you need not give any question, don't expect any answer, you just see, sit quiet and feel if your mind is quiet or not. If it is quiet, then you expect, this is, this is the man who can teach you, this is the man who is worth staying near. <laughs> If you are very intensely in want of this thing for freedom and you don't understand, so this freedom out of compassion takes a physical form to speak to you in your own tongue so that you understand what is freedom and then it teaches that I am your own self and then it enters your own self and become one. This is the role of the teacher to point out to you I am yourself, I am that itself. This is the role of the teacher for some time it becomes a teacher to just apprise you of the fact that you are that you don't listen. Therefore he becomes teacher that becomes teacher to tell you, you are that itself. And then you see teacher and you is one. <laughs> Everyone who comes to you, you are encouraging them to look for their own self. Why, why are you doing this? What motivates you to do this? My own happiness because they are sleeping. Mm and they are suffering when the treasure is within them.
some power is compelling you to give satsang, yes? Yes, some power is like this thing. Mm. Now I want to drink water. I say, Punjaji, <laughs> pick up the glass. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, I pick it up, put it in the mouth. <laughs> I put in, drink, I drink like this thing. <laughs> What difference is this? Now I have not come into the hand. It's all me, you mm. see. People who are benefited and not others, you see. Hand is my own. And my stomach is my own. And requirement is my own, you see. Who are others? Who is other? Who is first of all ignorant? I don't believe. Who wants to be free? I don't believe. Hmm? Who is not free, I don't believe. So they are joking, I am in trouble, I am bound. So I am also joking, you are not bound, you are free. It takes long time, no, no, now itself. Ah, this is a joke. I take it a joke, you see. I am a bound, isn't it? Is it not a joke because they don't show me the chains? <laughs> Not the fetters, not the prison. What kind of jail is this thing? <laughs> Simply this. <laughs> so it's a big joke. I enjoy this joke. <laughs> so when you look at people in satsang, Papaji, you only see enlightened people who are pretending not to be enlightened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a difficult question, but I have to answer because I answer all questions. <laughs> First of all, I all absorb them and give them seat in my heart. In my heart, you see. As the lover gives seat to the beloved in his heart, always seated. So I open here. You all sit in my heart and we will, we will speak together, yes, sir. You are not apart from me, within the heart. You are in my heart. Let us speak. <laughs> we speak, you see, just like on the stage. We speak, yes. Sir. When you look at people who come to you mm. and they tell you, Papaji, I suffer, do you mm. feel compassion for them? And when they wake up, do you rejoice? I do feel compassion because what is there? What else is there for me? I have compassion for all beings who are suffering and who are dreaming. I just tell them, wake up, my dear, <laughs> my dear friends, my dear children, wake up. There's no suffering at all. It's only projection of your mind and which has produced the suffering and <laughs> you are dreaming only. <laughs> Wake up from the dream and all the suffering will end. One, one final question, Papaji. All, all your life you have been trying to express your own inner experience. Will you please make one more attempt for us? Who are you? What are you? What is your own experience of yourself? <laughs> Very easy reply is, I am your own self. I am your own self. And this is truth. <laughs> How can it be? I am, I am myself only. I am your own self and the self of all the beings that exist and that have to exist. <laughs> Can you look for a, sec for a few seconds directly in the camera, Papaji? We want you to give darshan directly to the people watching. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you look here and smile at them? <laughs> Where? Yeah. To whom I speak? Is, Hi. Uh, uh, it is, uh, I see my own reflection. <laughs> what can I speak? Yes, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. Yes, man. Yeah. Who are you? 
Who are you? I am. Oh, don't you understand? I am Papa Ji. Oh, oh, I forgot. Now <laughs> <laughs> what is she?